Hey, what's up guys? It's Pixel Lady Apollo. Thanks for stopping by and welcome back to another Medieval 2 Total War Online Battle. This is a 2v2 on the Britannia expansion and I'm commanding the Scottish. Yes, the brave and free Scottish. Now originally this battle was going to be live, but it was super duper laggy. So I just dis decided to do the, uh, the battle replay. But if you want to watch me play live or even watch this battle live, check out my uh, Twitch account. There's a link in the description. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 5 p.m to 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And uh, remember guys, there is a pass broadcast. So again, if you wanna watch me play this battle live, you can check it out. But I do warn you, it's super duper laggy. So on that note, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, yeah, my ally over here, the French, you know, historically correct ally, which is pretty cool, commanded by Leaf. And then we have Russia, commanded by Definitely Not Wipeout. And we have England, commanded by Keza552. So there you, there you have it. So let's uh, start off here by looking at the army comps, starting with my army. So starting with my skirmish force, uh, I have a pretty solid skirmish force, at least for the price. Uh, the money for this battle, 10k per players, the rules, max 6, 2 cav, no art, no elephants, and no guns. Uh, so yeah, here's my archer force, two units of noble highland archers, very awesome. And then I've got two units of Highland Archers, so they're a little less noble. They're not as good, but they'll get the job done. I mean, they look pretty glorious. And then for my Infantry Corps, I don't have the best infantry, but I have a solid infantry that can hopefully hold the line. I've got four units of Highland Pikemen. They're a pretty cheap unit, but if you use them effectively, they can really hold the line, which is fantastic. And then I've got uh, four units of Noble Swordsmen, which are really, really nasty. They're equivalent to Shivrick Knights, so they're pretty good fighters. And then for my Cav Force, this is where this is where it's really tough being Scotland, especially in the Britannia expansion. If you thought they were bad in the vanilla, they're really bad in this expansion because for whatever reason, I cannot get Templar. I don't know why, it's just in the mod they're like, you know what, Scotland, you don't get Templar, screw you. So the best Cav Force that I can bring is the Feudal Knights. And they're a good unit in like campaign, but in online, you're not going to win too many cav battles. So I've got three units of Feudal Knights. I tried to put as many upgrades as I could on them. So weapon and defense. And then I've got two units of mailed Knights. Here they go, running by. Check them out. They look awesome. And my general is way over here. So there's my general's bodyguard. And there's my general. Fantastic. So let's check out the French army here. Looks like he's got about two units of Noble Knights. He's got, oh, actually three units. Four units of noble knights, pretty solid cav there. Then he's got a general's bodyguard. I think that's all of his cav. Actually, no, he's got uh, two more units of mounted sergeants. So actually, he broke the rules there. He brought six, or hold on, how many? Let's see, hold on, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six, seven. He brought seven cav, which uh, you you were only allowed six, but the players didn't mind too much. They didn't care. Uh, but yeah, two mounted sergeants. And then he has four units of crossbowmen. Pretty solid, they've got that AP attack, but they don't have shields like the Pavis. Uh, that makes them a little bit weaker. But, you know, overall, I think this is a good uh, skirmishing force for the money. And it uh, looks like he's got some peasant crossbows too. So he's bringing a couple extra crossbows to the field of battle, more than just four. And then he's got uh, some Shivrick Knights here. About three units of Shivrick Knights. He's got about two units of Feudal Knights. So pretty solid infantry core. And then he's got two dismounted nobles, which are really good at killing Cav. And, and also pretty good at uh, fighting infantry. So let's go ahead and check out the Russian player here. As you can tell, I'm doing a little Cav charge. Uh, but I do call it off because he notices that I'm charging in my Cav. And he's going to send in his Tsar's Guard. So let's go ahead and start with the Russian Cav. He's got one General's Bodyguard somewhere in the mix. The Bodyguard looks just like the Tsar's Guard. So there he is. It's right here. There's the general. And then he's got about one, two, three, four units of Sars Guard, and he has one Devor Cav, which is like a heavy, heavily armored missile cav, very deadly. And then he has four units of the dismounted Devor, which are like infantry, but they have bows. So they're very versatile, very awesome. They're equivalent, their skill is equivalent to the dismounted Drazina and the Boyer Sun. So yeah, that's 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 pretty good and then he has uh, four units of the dismounted Drazina, four units of the British Axemen and I think that's about his army that is the Russian army so checking out the English forces here we'll go ahead and start with this cab 
looks like he's got about four units of Knights Templar, and he has two Generals Bodyguard. So yeah, he's bringing both early and late period, but I think the late period has the actual general in it. Yes, there he is, looking fancy. And then he has, uh, let's see, one unit of Retinue Longbows, and then he has four units of Sherwood Archers, which these guys are annoying. They're pretty good at fighting, and they're pretty good at shooting, so damn them to hell. <laughs> And then for his heavy infantry, it looks like he's got some feudal knights, about two units of feudal knights, two units of armored swordsmen, and two units of dismounted English knights, and two units, lucky number two, of heavy buildmen. Now, I'm not a big heavy buildmen fan, but if you get them in the mix with the uh, the calf battle, they can be pretty handy. And uh, that's it for the battle, or the army comp, so we'll go ahead and do normal speed here. And right now, we're just kind of setting up our forces. France is sending over his cav to my flank, which I thought was interesting. Oh, I forgot. By the way, I have this one unit of Highland Nobles that I completely forgot about. Uh, they're a I just forgot to deploy them next to my other army. Uh, but the Highland Nobles, they're going to help me out in the infantry battle and in the cav battle. I think they're pretty good at killing cav or cav that's stationary. So, uh, yeah, hopefully they get here in time. But right now, we've got the upper hill, the, the hill advantage here, the terrain advantage. So I'm trying quickly to try to get my archers in position and start releasing hell upon them and make them, you know, feel uncomfortable, you know, constantly getting uh, sprayed down by, by arrows. Uh, but I'm just not quite in range yet. Also, I don't want to get too ahead of myself because my ally is not in position. So I do not want to be a 2v1. That would be a bad situation. So the French are now retreating some of his noble, noble cav over to this side. Because I think he's a little bit worried about the Sars guard over here. Which is a pretty good decision. Uh, but what he does next is not a good decision. He, so he has the other two noble knights. He's getting really aggressive with the cav units. And usually you don't want to get aggressive with your cav when you don't have your cav together in full force. Now you could charge in and try to get some archer kills, you know, try to kill their archers with your cav. But it looks like he's going straight in for the cav battle. Like he wants to kill this Templar Knight. And this is where the battle truly begins. Everything gets insane right about here. There goes the cav charge. Noble Knights versus Knights Templar. And then... Other noble knights here kind of, I think he was going to try to flank around here, but the heavy billman kind of zoning them out. Good use of the heavy billman. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's engaged in melee. This is a fight he's going to lose against the Templar knights. Uh, I go ahead and send in my cav because I'm trying to save his cav, but I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm getting out of there. At the same time, I'm charging in some male knights into the archers, trying to weaken their archer force. There we go. Pretty good charge there. And then this one is not quite going to get the Sherwoods. I make a very bad mistake here. I completely forgot about the cav units I'm charging in. I'm trying to get them out of the fight, but they do break. So that was very, very sloppy by me. And uh, now this cav paddle is going on over here. I'm trying to outmaneuver these Knights Templar because my cav units are not as good as his. So I'm just trying to outmaneuver out them, use tactics on them, but it, it's not really working. And then finally, my, my Highland Nobles joining the fight. Check out this charge, guys. Get in there, lads. Get in there. Show them no mercy. Uh, but my cab is breaking. And the Sars Guard joining the battle. So since the Sars Guard is sending in their cab, I went ahead and sent in some Noble Swordsmen. I'm also focusing my archers to try to weaken their numbers a little bit as they're engaged. Because I don't really have a lot of friendlies over here. So I don't really have to worry about friendly fire. So yeah, I'm just trying to kill as many cab units as I can with my infantry and archers so over here we did we uh the sars guard charging into my highland nobles that was a really sneaky charge there i'm pushing forward my uh highland pikemen to try to zone them away get them out of here and eventually they do run away and we get a couple kills which is pretty nice but here comes the infantry charge both russia and england charging in their infantry and uh it's man my pikemen were not in in a good formation and then I've got my Noble Swordsman joining the fight. Look at this. The uh, Drazina coming in here. The British Axeman going in. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do some slow-mo. Oop, that's speeding up. Slow-mo here so we can really analyze the whole battlefield. So, yeah, my infantry is pretty much all engaged. My pikemen do not have their pikes out, which is very, very bad for me. They're pretty much useless at this point. They need the pikes. 
I've got my my armored swordsman also in the mix. Over here, it's a little bit better of a situation. My pikes are keeping them back, so that's pretty nice. Uh, but the cab battle is... We're, we're still fighting over here. The French sent some noble knights, and then uh, England is sending the cab that was victorious over here. He's charging into my archers. Not a big deal. I've got my general nearby protecting him, and I've got some feudal knights that return from uh, breaking from the battle. Now, France over here is finally charging in his infantry. Uh, Russia's going to have some, uh, some reserves over here to uh, protect the flank, which uh, I think is a great decision. So let's go ahead and go back to normal speed, guys. And we are breaking the English cab back here, so that's good. We don't have to worry about the English cab flanking around. I've got some mailed knights that return from uh, the fight. And we are we are winning over here, kind of. So I got a little flanking charge with my uh, noble swordsman on these uh, armored, armored swordsmen. So wh what's going on here? Oh, my, my poor noble knights, or my feudal knights. Returning from the field of battle, or returning from breaking, and then they come back and just die. They just get slaughtered. So I'm sending back in my, my Highland Nobles into this fight. Because again, they're pretty good at killing stationary calf. And we've lost half of my army so far. So things are not looking good, but what I'm hoping for is that France kind of cleans up this battle, and I just try to kill as many as I can. But, oh man, while his infantry was engaged with the Russians... Uh, the Dvor Cav getting a beautiful hammer and anvil. That's the great thing about Dvor Cav. You can use them as a melee and skirmish cav. So he's having a tough time against these Russians. And England is just not cracking. And sadly, my Highland pikemen are breaking because they were not in a good position. Even my noble swordsman, a unit is six breaking over there, which is understandable. Uh, but the Sars Guard really pushing on my flank here. I got my general kind of like the last stand of defense against this flanking charge. I'm gonna charge him in, and I'm, I'm telling my archers to shoot at this cab because it's what I'm most afraid of. And the uh, the Russian generals over here. But look at this, my lines are just getting cut into pieces. They are breaking. And now we have this Russian charge right into my archers. Uh, France, though, is still somewhat okay. I do have some Highland uh, no, uh, noble swordsmen over here. And some pikemen, too. Kind of fighting a little bit. So this is what this flank looks like. It's, it's not pretty. It is not pretty. And there goes my general. He died when he was trying to fight off the Sars Guard flank. And the feudal knights getting cut down. Oh, man. Yeah, it was a pretty brutal fight. I think I got a little too aggressive. Or actually, you know, I think the French shouldn't have charged in his two units of cav there. I think he should have used them a little bit more defensively. Because they had better cav than us Only overall. The enemy force remains. And that charge really ignited the, the battle. And I, I think the French should have kind of waited a little bit longer. We must secure his release by oh, that was... Was that my general? I don't know. I guess my general didn't die. I guess that was a French general dying earlier. Oh, look at that charge, though, from the English general. Oh, my God. That is ridiculous. He just wiped out this whole unit. And here goes... Oh, man. All the dismounted Devor getting their volleys off. Uh, yeah, so the French are pretty much destroyed here. And I am pretty much destroyed. This is where I admit defeat because I have nothing left. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the remaining... Poor Scott's lives off the field of battle. So, uh, yeah, I think we made a lot of mistakes on my side. One of my major mistakes, I, I think I did okay with the cab engagement. I think my cab did all right. It was more the positioning of my pikemen. My pikemen were out of position, and they didn't get their pikes down, and it just wasn't pretty. Uh, I got f almost 500 kills, which is okay, I guess. Not really. Uh, my teammate getting 344. Uh, Russia getting 544 and England getting 705 with 238 prisoners. By the way, Russia got 260 prisoners, but that's, you know, more towards the end of the battle when they're capturing the retreating men. Um, let's see here. Let's see how my feudal knights did. They did okay. I mean, this one got 36 kills, but this one only got 17. Not exactly great. Uh, if we look at my pikemen... Well, some of them got 34 kills, 21 kills, one got 5 kills. 
my noble swordsman uh, doing okay. Um, I've got 39 kills, 50 kills, 29 kills. So that's that's pretty solid, I guess. But again, uh, like I said earlier, those mistakes we made was really the nail in the coffin. And uh, just good game to all the players here. It was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this battle replay. I'm going to try to get more pitch battles out there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.